Well, joining us for, from London now is uh, Bill Browder, who is also the founder and CEO of Hermitage Capital. And Bill, let's just start by outlining what you see as the danger of Russia taking over that top job in Interpol. Well, it's kind of obvious. You, ha you have a, a country that's been involved in, in uh, chemical weapons um, in Salisbury, England, uh, shooting down a passenger plane with 298 innocent people in Ukraine, uh, hacking elections, cheating in the Olympics, and, and just about everything else. This is a criminal regime. And to put a criminal regime in charge of the most uh, important international police organization it's like putting the mafia in charge, and, and that's just a complete disaster for law enforcement going forward. Bill, uh, Russia has made it clear as recently as yesterday that they are not planning to let up on trying to get you to Moscow. New charges, including accusing you of leading an organized crime group. How do you respond to that recent announcement from Moscow? Well, ba basically, um, Vladimir Putin has been chasing me uh, through a personal vendetta ever since I got the U.S. Magnitsky Act passed. That was in 2012, and then all of these criminal cases and, and Interpol red notices and, and convictions and new cases have emerged time and time again. There tends to be a pattern. Whenever there's a major um, breakthrough in our campaign for new sanctions, there's a new criminal case against me. Yesterday, um, actually, no, today, the Dutch government was introducing an EU Magnitsky Act, which would apply towards Russians all over the EU. And this is something that Putin is particularly sensitive to. And that's, in my, in my mind, what precipitated this latest set of charges. Uh, Bill, there was a time when one might expect uh, uh, Washington, the U.S., to be uh, perhaps leading efforts to prevent a Russian from taking charge of Interpol. Now, you mentioned the Magnitsky Act, which was passed under the Obama administration. How helpful or not do you see the Trump administration in, for example, uh, reigning in Russia? Well, I, I want to make two distinct. I want to make one big distinction, which is there's Donald Trump in his Twitter feed, which uh, apparently is very uh, partial towards Vladimir Putin, and then there's everyone else in his administration who are absolutely tough as nails towards Russia. And so, I, uh, my own experience has been um, uh, quite positive with the Trump administration in terms of being tough on Russia, and we can see that with the. Um, uh, seven major oligarchs who were sanctioned in April. We could see that um, with the Magnitsky uh, sanctions, which were put in place uh, last December. And we can see it in the global Magnitsky Act rollout, which has been happening on a regular basis. And so I'm actually quite happy with, with the administration's approach towards Russia. Now, as far as the Interpol is concerned, the, the really um, messed up part of this whole story is that Interpol has 192 members, and each member, which is a country, gets one vote. And so the United States gets one vote, and so does Mauritania. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the United Kingdom gets one vote, and so does Cameroon. And Russia has had a specialty of running around international organizations getting votes for stuff. That's how they got the World Cup, uh, through bribing countries in, uh, that are part of FIFA. And that's how they got the uh, Olympics. Um, through the International Olympic Committee by bribing countries. And so I, I can't say what's going on behind the scenes on this Interpol stuff, but I can easily imagine if it's anything similar to how they've done these other things, that they probably got a whole bunch of guys on the payroll. Bill, the whole issue of Russia, its actions, its interaction with the American government has, has almost become a partisan issue in the United States rather than a strictly national security issue. So I'd like to ask you, from all of your uh, very personal familiarity with the Kremlin, how would you describe, I mean, what would your message be to viewers, to Americans, that they should know about that government? Well, the most important thing that people should know is that the Russian government is not a government. The Russian government is basically a bunch of, of gangsters. And when I say gangsters, I mean people who have gone into government positions to steal as much money as they could possibly steal. And I estimate that Putin is worth $200 billion, and if the 1,000 other people at the top of his regime around him altogether are worth a trillion dollars. And all that money has been stolen from the Russian government, from the Russian people, and, and so this is not a government like we think of when we look at other governments. These are people who have basically stolen everything from, from everybody, and they're in the crime business. They're not in the government business. Uh, Bill, I have to ask you, you're talking to us from the U.K., a country where Sergei Skripal was a, 
uh, seemingly to all evidence targeted by Russian intelligence with a deadly nerve agent. I would like to know if you think the world is doing enough to follow up on that case. <clears throat> and how about your own personal situation? We know that the Kremlin, what in the one means or another, is pursuing you. Well, my, um, my own personal situation is grave, as you can probably imagine. They've threatened me with death, with kidnapping, with Interpol red notices, <clears throat> with extradition. Um, uh, and, and, and so there, there's a real serious security situation for me. That, that hasn't changed my behavior. I'm not going to back down. I'm, I'm fighting for justice for Sergei Magnitsky, my murdered lawyer, and I will continue to do so. Um, I do find it um, quite frustrating in the UK after the Russians have used um, a, a military-grade chemical weapon to try to attack one of their enemies, um, that the only thing that's happened to them so far is that they were um, they had some diplomats kicked out. There have not been any sanctions imposed on Russia from the United, from the British government, and and that is a real problem. And and if long as long as there's no huge consequences, they'll kill again. How do you expect your own personal security to change? if and when Russia does take over the presidency of Interpol in that vote tomorrow? Well, um, we'll just have to see what happens with the vote tomorrow, and then we'll have to see how the Western governments react to that. I mean, I, I do think that, that um, I'm not the only person concerned about this. Well, Everybody I've talked to in the U.S. government and the British government, et cetera, are very concerned. Well, I, so l let's take that a step further. What would you ask of other Western governments? What would your message to them be at this very critical moment before that vote? <clears throat> well, the, the first thing that needs to happen is everybody needs to vote against um, this Russian candidate. There's a South Korean candidate who seems perfectly reasonable, who they can all vote for. Um, I think that the U.S. and other uh, allies should pressure those countries that are sort of sitting in the middle um, to vote along with them. And, um, and hopefully the result is that the Russian doesn't get elected. If he does get elected, um, there is a huge amount of power that the U.S. and the European Union have, which is they fund Interpol. And they can withhold funding until reforms and checks and balances and controls are put in place so that the Russians can't do anything. And if that doesn't succeed, then I think that there should be a plan B, which is, you know, how can we function if criminals are running, uh, are running the police force? And that may, may need to be a new uh, architecture for international police cooperation. Uh, Bill, uh, certainly you uh, deserve credit for the Magnitsky Act, which clearly has had an impact on the Kremlin. But beyond that, what, give me an example of one concrete action that you want to see Western governments take uh, uh, de in dealing with the uh, Putin government? Well, the, the main thing is we have a Magnitsky Act in the United States. There's one in Canada. There's one in the United Kingdom. There's one in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. I'd like to see lots of bad guys sanctioned. Right now, it's a very small list of people. And what I'd like to see is that this, this concept, this, this tool, is used against human rights violators on a regular and consistent basis. Because if it is, then bad guys will understand that there's a high likelihood of consequences, and that might change their behavior, and then less people will be killed, less people will be tortured, and, 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 and hopefully, um, uh, the, the world will become a little bit of a fairer place.